Sicilians and others in Myanmar donate the most needed life-saving supplies to cope with the third wave of the pandemic. Sisi Foundation and Huan and Prison visit inmates' families with festive blessings before the Mid-Autumn Festival. 欢迎收睇大眼 headlines， 我系 Ruby 五，我哋一齐睇下今日嘅内容。In Myanmar, over the past two months, Sisi Liaison Office has donated more than 1,500 oxygen concentrators and 1,000 oxygen cylinders to medical units. Team of volunteer Lin Minqing was involved in the imports of the equipment. He was once diagnosed with COVID and can better understand the master saying of always doing good deeds. The oxygen concentrators and oxygen cylinders purchased by Tsuzi Lee's and office in Myanmar finally arrived at a warehouse in Yangang after many twists and turns. We have to wait for the flights to transport the oxygen concentrators, yet they are desperately needed here. We were worried because of the queue for transportation. There are many difficulties during this period. We need to always get prepared. The quarantine center in Halegu Township has admitted 200 confirmed cases, but the oxygen supply was far from enough. <coughs> the third wave of the pandemic is very difficult. Everyone thought it was just like the previous ones. However, beyond everyone's expectation, the transmission rate of the third wave rises quickly, and there is a severe lack of oxygen. And insufficient oxygen is a big challenge for us. Fortunately, City Foundation has donated 500 cylinders of 40-liter oxygen. And 40 oxygen concentrators to us. Oxygen concentrators in Lizzie. Li Mingqing, his staff, and eight Su Tings have all been diagnosed with COVID-19. They deeply understand that life-saving supplies cannot be delayed. Water cannot be too much or too little, and put it here. The master once told me to do Su Ji all the time, do good deeds always. I am very grateful that these oxygen concentrators can help many confirmed patients to recover. I'm very proud to be a Zijing, being able to do good deeds with Zijing volunteers and grow up in Zijing family. Although there were many obstacles, all have been cleared. After having the most needed supplies, it is expected that the pandemic can be eliminated soon. Under the pandemic, Malaysian team doctor Chen Xiangning has faced all kinds of emergency situations and impermanence at work with kindness. She said that being able to change her mindset and stay upbeat was all because of the Buddha's teachings. Let me this wise doctor. In Pandong, Kada, group infection took place at the end of July. Team doctor Tan Xiangning, who works at the government clinic, said that the clinic staff were overwhelmed. In addition, the local villagers lack pandemic prevention knowledge, and they could suddenly fall ill, worrying the medical workers. Some patients told us, "No, I did not have any symptoms." Then, after he entered the clinic, he told us that he has been coughing. After undergoing COVID screening, he has been confirmed as a COVID patient. By then, he had already walked around in the clinic. As a result, back then, among half of the medical workers, some contracted the virus, while others had to be quarantined at home. Facing emergency situations, Tan is calm. Facing a permanence, she has a broad mind. I've called some patients to see how they're doing. Then on the second day, he told me he has been hospitalized. By the third day, he has passed away. There are too many cases like this. So sometimes we feel that it's a result of the patient's karma. We can only deliver our best wishes to them. During the pandemic, the clinic has been through all kinds of challenges. Tan has been able to handle the situation with a calm mind. She has also calmed her colleagues. Sometimes we learn that other clinics are short on manpower. When they ask us to support them, and we're already short on staff, some people will feel worried. Then I told them to look at the situation from another angle. We have an opportunity to give of ourselves. We can help them lessen their workload. We should calm down and think what we should do. As we calm down, other people will feel peace of mind seeing us. These are things I never thought of before I learned Buddhist teachings. Dr. Tan has handled situations with her wisdom in times of emergency as she continues to help more patients. 
Also in Malaysia, a dialysis patient contracted COVID as he was in the hospital for broken bones. Such body pains made him hopeless. Cadet Suzu volunteers began a virtual prayer circle as support. In the end, the patient saw how much he was loved and tried his best to recover. I saw two patients pass away. I was scared and I didn't want to live anymore. Feeling helpless about life was Abu Hai Muhammad Hanifa when he was in the isolation room being treated for COVID-19. He caught the infection in the hospital when he was there for broken bones. I had difficulty swallowing and eating. I had two oxygen tubes attached. One was in my nose, the other was around my head so it would flow. Abduhai is very strong-willed and had a strained relationship with his daughter. However, when the daughter heard her father caught COVID, Fardila was remorseful about her past behavior and longed for his recovery. When I heard my father felt hopeless, I was scared. I knew I have done things to disappoint him, and I didn't want something to happen and regret my actions. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to say sorry to him in person. I'm grateful for my parents and that when they are still alive, I should express my gratitude. Abduha's wife hoped collective prayers could further bring strength for her husband. I asked the nurse to pray for Abduhai. He's not with me, so I don't know what to do to help. I'm grateful that Susie has been virtually praying for him. Allah must have heard the prayers. I'm definitely grateful. Right now I'm alive, right here, right then. Prayers were sent my way. I'm alive today because Allah heard and wanted to give me another lease on life. The prayers of those who care for Abduhai helped him find the confidence to live once more, and he's also learned how to humble himself and treasure his family and friends. It has been 22 years since the Line 21 earthquake happened. Suzy's Project Hope rebuilt a number of affected campuses, such as Zizi Junior High School. At that time, Chen Jihen was in the third grade of this school. Now, he is the township chief. He has several classmates who also stay in Zizi. And together, they cannot forget the pain of that year. But now, they all have grown up and provide good shelter for everyone. I was only halfway through my sleep. Everything was a little hazy. And I thought, why is my ceiling shaking? I have never experienced such a big earthquake. After the first shake, I didn't dare to move. Fortunately, we didn't hear any classmates died because of the earthquake. The school was tilting severely, and the first floor sunk down. When the September 21st earthquake first happened, it felt like purgatory on earth. Everything was a waste, and many felt that Zizi was destroyed. What was very inspiring was Zizi volunteers came on their own from Kaohsiung and Taipei. They were willing to come and help us, so we had to cheer up. There were also some classmates who actively participated in the reconstruction work. He cares about us elders and comes to give condolences from time to time so we can feel relieved. When I think of the 921 earthquake, I feel very afraid. The first time the tremor came, it shook from south to north. Then there was a second one, and the third one moved from east to west. This house with a tiled roof collapsed on the third tremor. <laughs> Yes, 
Welcome. This is my wife. This is the auntie who works at the breakfast store. Guess what she will give birth to? A boy or a girl? Take a guess. Seven months. She needs to eat more. Good evening. Hello. Many people want to come back to Nantou, trying to see if they can create some job opportunities which can help them consider moving back. I will always accompany him until he completes his mission. Many classmates stay in their hometown and work hard. Sometimes they meet on the road and talk. It's a certain kind of intimacy. I would turn like this and there was Chen Jihen. He would just look at me and puzzled what I was doing. I didn't reveal my intentions, but he would silently teach me. His math was good, but mine was a little better. Seeing them grow up healthy and finding their own suitable direction in life gives me the greatest joy as a teacher. The Central Weather Bureau reported that the 921 earthquake registered 7.3 on the Richter scale, killing 2,400 people with many houses collapsed and more than 700 schools destroyed. As science and technology advances, earthquake forecasting technology has improved. It is anticipated that the earthquake early warning time will be shortened to 7 seconds in 2024, so as to give more chances for people to flee to safety. On September 21, 1999, a 7.3 Richter scale earthquake in Taiwan caused the collapse of the Dongxing building in Taipei. One o'clock in the morning, many people were still in their sleep. A shocking earthquake shattered countless families. More than 2,400 people died. Nearly 100,000 houses collapsed. At that time, the people living near the Dongxing building still had lingering fears. At that time, there was a bang. I thought it was the house next door that fell down. Unexpectedly, it was the opposite building. They had to crawl out. At that time, I couldn't look at it because it was so horrible. The fire upstairs was still burning. After the 921 earthquake, Taiwanese laws and disaster relief systems have evolved, and seismic observation technology has been continuously improved. More than 1,000 different types of seismic observatories have been established. In 2016, it became the third country in the world to successfully issue earthquake warnings to the public. We have increased the density of seismic stations and used technology in research and development to shorten the time of this early warning before a catastrophic seismic wave arrives. The public will be able to receive a warning, and we hope that we will slowly understand the characteristics of the earthquake to make an accurate earthquake prediction. That is one of our ultimate goals. The Central Weather Bureau released an earthquake report 22 years ago through social media. It showed the dislocation of the Chenglopua Fault, caused by a 105-kilometer-long scar. Those 102 seconds caused indelible pain for many people. Now that earthquake warning times have shortened to within 10 seconds, it is hoped that many casualties will be reduced in future earthquakes. Staff from Huanian Prison, together with the Cixi Foundation and the Taiwan Aftercare Association, went to care for inmates' families before the Mid-Autumn Festival, sending blessed blessings and condolences to them. Staff of Hualien Prison and Cixi Volunteers went to an inmate's home to accompany her family members and sent them a gift for the Mid-Autumn Festival. Combined with the Zhiji Foundation and the Taiwan Aftercare Association, we are all able to give out timely care. We visit the families in need together. We hope to do our best to help them so that they can have a happy mid-autumn festival. How are you? I miss you so much. Thank you for Huanian Prison Officer for letting us meet and interact through video recording. I hope you can take good care of your health. The inmate expressed missing her family through a video, seeing her child, 
This mother resisted her tears and recorded a video to her daughter in prison. We are all fine at home. You have to take good care over there. Don't worry, take care for yourself. With our care, we hope to let them feel the warmth of society. Even though they are having the hardest time now, we can give them more help and courage. Over this mid autumn festival, this sincere care from society let the family members of the inmates feel a trace of warmth and hope. An 86-year-old elder living in Kino is a retired colonel with chronic disease and knee degeneration. His wife has mental disorders and has a habit of holding things, filling his whole house with miscellaneous things over the years. The elder's relative asked to the volunteers to tidy up for them, so that they could spend a bit autumn festival in a clean environment. The house is full of all kinds of things that there is no space to walk, and the things are piled up almost to the ceiling. This is the home of a retired colonel. His wife has a mental disorder and her habits of collecting things over time has slowly made the home like this. Because my aunt may have a mental disorder, so she has piled up many things and she doesn't allow us to clean up. That's why I sought Ziji to help clear out these things. Thank you so much. Our Ziji brothers and sisters spend our effort in communicating and coordinating with the house owner every day. So at last the owner opened up her heart and allowed us to clear out these things, which are all her treasures. The first step of the cleaning is to empty the house. Volunteers light up to move out the things. Even new should scholarship recipients came to help. It's hard to imagine that an elder can live in such an environment. I'm honored to be able to work with Ziji brothers and sisters to help cleaning today. It's fulfilling to spend the whole morning volunteering. I hope to join this kind of volunteer activities again next time. The health of the 86-year-old male owner, who has lived in such an environment for many years, is not satisfactory. Fortunately, he has enthusiastic laborers to help him clean up the garbage. I help dump all the garbage for him. Sometimes I go up to collect it. Sometimes he puts it at the door. If I take out the trash at night, I will help him take it away. I just help as much as I can. I treat them as our seniors, so I can't bear to see them like this. After four hours of volunteers' help work, more than 200 bags of garbage were cleared out. The garbage chart of the Environmental Protection Department has to go for four times to move away all the garbage. Volunteers also returned the money collected during the cleaning to the elders and gave them food and blessings, hoping that they can live with peace of mind thereafter. As to the university medical students take the National OSCE second exam, they have for two years in a row passed 100 percent. In today's Ray of Hope series, we highlight how Tzu's College of Medicine practices their teaching and succeeds in getting such good report cards. We specialize in smaller classroom size and also silent mentor dissecting course. The next is our standardized patient course, which helps our students become better clinical doctors. Lastly, we have four very good teaching hospitals. For the past two years, our medical students have all passed the second part of the National Objective Structured Clinical Examination. We take a lot of time to learn about dissection and anatomy because we have the promise of silent mentors to uphold. The silent mentors and the teachers who donate their body for dissection really help in building the foundation for the medical students. This is why during national exams and clinical exams, our students do very well. The cuts made on the bodies of the silent mentors, each mistake will, in the future, during our long medical journey, serve as a reminder that being a good doctor is not easy.
The mock surgery class in the fifth year and the dissection class in the third year, I think as a Zuji University student, we had a chance to get to know the silent mentors and their family, which helped us learn about how it relates to this disease. I think it helped greatly. Some of our courses, our teachers are standardized patients who help us hone our skills. I believe these types of training help during the OSCE exam. If a six-year-old med student has constant practice in that area, then of course when the actual exam comes up, they won't be overly nervous and can perform their best. I think that's pretty important. Being a standardized patient is not easy. For example, if they are playing a patient with a stomach problem and they have 12 students, then they would have to endure the examination procedure of pushing on their stomach 12 times. This is what they endure to help the students to have more confidence for the future in dealing with real patients and real families. This is one of the unique aspects of Digi's education. Although we have condensed what is normally a seven-year curriculum into six years, I believe we have done it better than before, which I think speaks volumes for us. It's a milestone after the change in our medical education. She was very sincere and friendly. She was always in a kneeling position, to be at eye level with the patient, she gave us a very friendly vibe. We continue to be understaffed and medical people in the eastern Taiwan region. So thanks to the establishment, the Zhiji University College of Medicine, that for Hualien Zhiji Medical Center, we have about 40% of the attending physicians who are graduates of Zhiji University, while it's 60% for our resident doctors. They're all helping to serve the east coast region. Arriving here, I see a different side to the medical service as I can't bring all my medicine or equipment. We must gain information through physical examination and patient history. These two parts are what we need to work on. And this is what I have learned on this trip. During their medical journey, if we can plant seeds of compassion early on in their hearts, then in the future, when they are practicing their license, they could recall their gratitude and respect in their interactions with the patients. This is why we hope we have nurtured our medical students with empathy and care in patient care. Congratulations to five American high school students in Taichung who have defeated 1,400 participating teams to be the world champion in the 2021 Best Robotics World Championship. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and see you next time.